Why hello there and welcome back to Van Build Central. Um, I probably have to address the elephant in the room or more the me in the room. Hi, I'm Confluence or Shani or Krishan. Um, I'm now recording this a lot later after the fact as you can probably see by the fact that I'm clearly in a different place that is the van. So uh, this is at the point where version one is finished but we're going back, we're going back in time now to when I did the rear right wall, which was in preparation for basically getting the electrics together to make sure that I'd not messed up any of the wiring, because I was pretty nervous about that. Um, being the first time I've done anything crazy and big and electrical like this, I kind of wanted to prioritize it, which I don't think was the, a bad choice, because it was quite a big thing that needed to fit in, and all the knowledge was in my head, ready and raring to go, so, it kind of made sense to just get on and do it. So the plan was to have the power station on the right hand side, the driver's side of the van, um, with most of the components sitting on top of the wheel arch box and the battery sitting next to that, essentially. Try and keep everything as close together, minimize the use of really expensive cables. It's all, always a good thing. Before I started this, I also popped in some conduit for the strip LEDs that I was planning to use, which I still haven't actually installed, so that's just kind of still hanging out. There you go, sometimes it's like that I guess. So I started with the insulation for the wall, which I used 50mm Kingspan in relatively small segments. I basically assembled it just like a jigsaw puzzle, kind of using what bits I had, using some new stuff. Trying to be optimal because at this point I didn't really know how much I had relative to how much I needed. I had calculated it and bought it all last summer, so it was quite a long time ago. And my hands just appeared. <laughs> yeah, I was trying to trying to be optimal and I essentially like friction fitted this king span across the entire wall before I stuck anything in place. Once it was all friction fit, I got out the spray foam gun and attacked it with that and actually stuck everything in and again like before I really had no reason to be worried about the spray foam it really wasn't that big of a deal it's actually kind of fun to use it works really well to stick everything in place yes it can be messy yes it's a bit a bit dangerous wearing gloves is a really good idea uh, wearing clothes you don't care about is a really good idea but really it's it's pretty cool stuff it does a really great job of sticking insulation board onto walls or just together into panes. Once it hardens up, it becomes really rock solid. And I'm actually glad that I insulated it that way in the end because both its heat and sound insulation properties are really solid. Uh, I don't think there would have been a better way to make my van wanting that sound insulation and decent heat insulation uh, any other way. Like even a layer of pure spray foam I don't think would have given me the same sound insulation properties so I'm really happy with the balance that that struck. Once all that was in place and hardened up or even while it was hardening up I went to cut down my sheet of three millimeter plywood which is really nice and bendy uh, which I decided to use for the bed area. Bendy and thin to basically maximize space for the bed because I wanted the absolute maximum possible that I could that I could feasibly produce uh, but I had two full sheets so I had to cut it down to the size of the wall the height of the wall essentially um, this is really tricky because the sheets are massive and it's thin and definitely has a potential to break I actually already damaged one of my sheets last summer when I got it because the wind just caught it when it was lying on the floor and snapped it a little bit thankfully it was at a position where it doesn't actually matter because I could just cut that bit off and not use it. Um, I managed to get that cut down first try essentially but it was tricky to figure out how to place it anywhere safely to make the cut. The working with the stuff was really awkward because you need a huge amount of space and you know lots of tables to put it on and yeah it, it's quite it's quite a tricky thing to manage but it, we got there. I got there. Yeah, me. <laughs> this guy, this this idiot. Then I need to make a template to get around the wheel arch, which I I just 
got some cardboard kind of in saving for templates. I think it might have been from the solar panel box. I essentially used an extremely professional technique of taping a pencil to a ruler to give myself a little bit more to hold on to and then just running it around the wheel arch um, while my mum held it. It's obviously a bit tricky because you can't hold it quite in the right place um, but it did actually work out and I think I've got a reasonable amount of footage of this to actually show you guys because at this point I had a little gorilla pod for my phone so the footage hopefully is going to improve from this video out or even from the back end of last video. So once I had the template drawn out and cut out with some scissors I then had to position it on the piece of plywood so we did quite a lot of measuring to make sure that it was in the right place on the plywood and once I was pretty confident drew around it it's a little bit tricky because it's cardboard and your pencil can slip and like the mark was a little bit weak but after a bit more sort of going over it it ended up in an okay place and I was ready to actually cut it out I managed to mount it up on, I think, a table and my workbench to cut it out. It's pretty awkward, but I got through it. In hindsight, I should have given myself more leeway. I should have cut more off because a little bit extra was a lot worse than a little bit less. Because unlike most of the other wood and the other bits, other thicknesses of plywood, uh, this stuff really didn't like being shaved. Like it had a tendency to just split. So cutting it down more really had the possibility of kind of ruining the whole thing. Um, I did have to cut down a little bit more after an initial test and then I decided I was happy with it. It actually wasn't really small enough even then. I probably should have just bit the bullet, taken it out and cut it down further, but I didn't. So I ended up kind of hacking a little bit more of it out with a hacksaw, very appropriate. Um, it's not appropriate at all, don't do that. I really don't recommend it. Um, but essentially like there's ribs along the wheel arch box much like there are along the roof uh or not the wheel arch box along the the wheel arch the the metal for the wheel arch and it was catching in a few places there so it was just it could have just been done with you know maybe taking like another 10 millimeters off it all the way around just so it fit a little bit better but you know i i got there with much cajoling I got my mum into help again. She was really helpful during this video in terms of holding the ply and, and just generally supporting my my crafty bits um, needed to do this, which is not my strongest suit. I was pretty terrible at art despite trying very hard at school. Uh, so we held it in place, kind of pushing it into where we wanted it to do and bending it while I then screwed it into the wall in a few places. And yeah, that was kind of that was kind of it. It, uh, it came together pretty well. More or less did what I intended it to do, maybe. And so yeah, then they had a completed wall, which is pretty cool. It's the first bit of wall that got done. And I'm actually gonna leave this video there, despite the fact that it's gonna be really short, because if I go into the next one now, it's gonna end up being really long. And I'm trying to keep these a little bit shorter and snappier and to the point. So next time it's gonna actually be building the wheel arch box and doing the rear left wall because spoiler alert as it happens I decided to switch my electricals my electricals power station -y, bishy bishy butts to the left hand side of the van for weight distribution reasons basically I realized that almost all my weight was going to be on the right hand side and it just didn't seem like a good idea so yeah I made the call to swap those around so it I had to do a bit more work before I actually got to the electrics but yeah I will catch you for that one next time around or for me right now because I'm going to record that now yeah cool <laughs> catch you later buddy tater tater tots Tickle me tater. <laughs>